Hi, and welcome to Frazzlecast. Climb aboard the gnome train. Woo! Chugga, 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 woo! Please make sure to keep your limbs and experimental instruments inside the train at all times. And now, on with the show. A podcast by a Blizzard fan gnome about World of Warcraft and geeky stuff. I promise you, they do talk about the world of Warcraft. They just go off the rails sometimes. So I'm Frasley, and I am joined by the maker of Amazing Faces, Eric Gowder of Game of the Week, and the reigner of Mounts, Spaz Weston. So it is episode 111, and we decided to go all ee or ee or however, but we went all crazy for E3. So a lot happened at E3, and I don't think we can cover it all without going out for on for at least three to five hours we've done before but i don't want to do that i don't want to edit all that but we're going to cover our favorite things from e3 before we get into that it's time for something epic and sandy what time is it it's time to go around the table great idea so what have you been up to recently we'll start with eric gowder well the most recently is me taking a sip of this coke right as you asked me a question but nice super professional of me but um as of lately uh just the grind on game of the week man that's that's the latest you're up to uh, what, what week 73 well that's what i'm working on now seven the last one is 72 and out uh today well this goes out on a monday whatever it's week 73 whatever nice i forget about pre-recording so yeah where it's like 375 videos now something like that that is insane and that's like every All weekday hard. yep every weekday why well, i do that to myself Yes, but you, <laughs> you, you have a great time, and I was on one of them uh, with, with the epic fail of Bennett Body or whatever. That was fun, making you have to that, try and get over it. That game is insane. <laughs> it is. It's. I'm going to do another week of it, I think, except for I'm going to try it with a touch interface. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to try and keep my cool for five videos trying to do it with a touch interface. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm going to test the limits. That'll that'll probably be sometime in the fall. Make sure you buy a lot of soundproofing first. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I have a pretty good setup. I have a very quiet mic that sits directly below my mouth, so it pretty much gets everything. So we'll we'll see. Or it could be horrifying. I don't know. Sometimes (laughs) when it explodes in a big way, uh, it's also fun. So anything else? Anything else? Uh, I pet a dog the other day. Ooh, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Follow that Twitter account. No, it was just brown. It was a brown dog. No, do you follow the Twitter account, like, can you pat the dog? Oh, no. It tweets about every single game and whether or not there is a dog in it and if you can pat it or not. What is that What is that Twitter account? I, I will literally follow that right now. At can you pat the dog, I believe. All right, I'm doing that literally right now. So while, while Eric is petting Spaz, what have you been up to? Let's see, it's been a long while since I've been on. I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, with my wife at the moment. Uh, I saw Ninja Sex Party uh, live in Sydney, which was absolutely brilliant. Oh, <laughs> funny story. So I got the PlayStation 4 trophy for Spider-Man in December. Yes. In uh, late February, I received an email from PlayStation saying, congratulations on getting that trophy. Here is something. Here's a bonus. And I was like, I don't even remember how long ago I got that thing. <laughs> So yeah, either their email servers were backlogged or their achievement servers were backlogged or something. I don't know. It just seems to take them a while to to get through that notice. But you know, well, yeah, I'm really enjoying the new wrestling brand AEW. They've been really good. I actually finally managed to get beat nine point nine in Smash Ultimate Story Mode um, with King K. Rule. That was very difficult. <laughs> And uh, I guess that's a good thing. I, I I played Smash, but I don't know the lingo. Uh, so in in the in the story mode where you just fight one after the other and it gets more difficult as it goes, nine point nine is the hardest, and there's a trophy for doing it. And I best I could ever get was like nine point seven, and I just get absolutely destroyed. But I managed it. I managed nice. it. Done. Well done. And then Nintendo will email you in about probably November. Yeah, yeah, probably, probably. I saw Detective Pikachu, but then again, so did literally everyone. Not me yet. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Well, I want to. It's on my list. Okay. Cool. Should I? Yes. 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 All right. Yes. All right. 
don't think down for it. The, the 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 simple thing is don't think too hard about all the Pokemon that you see. Just enjoy the movie okay. because I know some people who really nitpicked. Oh, that Pokemon wouldn't be there. That Pokemon shouldn't appear there. And it's just like don't just don't worry about that. Just enjoy the movie and just keep an eye out for your your favorites. There's lore to Pokemon now that there didn't used to be. It used to just be walk in the tall grass and you'll get attacked and oh, fight it or catch been, it. There's been lore for a very long time. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's, I miss the I miss the simpler days. Yeah. yeah. When, when it was just Pokemon Yellow and you gotta beat that guy because that guy's an, a meanie head and a poopy head and you gotta d- defeat them. Pretty much. Uh let's I see. don't know, I'd go as high as Gen 2. Okay. Because you get to fight yourself in the first game at the end of it. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Th- that is true. Yes. That was the beginning of the whole Pokemon canon, as it were. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I-, I went from 295 to 306 mounts in the last, like, fortnight. Um, I grabbed myself a Mecha Mogul off the auction house uh, earlier today because it was pretty cheap and it was the last one. And uh, kids, Fortnite means every two weeks. That does not mean oh, that he's right. got but, yes. mount. <laughs> I can't can't believe you need to do that and I can't believe you need to include that caveat (laughs) this youth translation brought to you by (laughs) I I just left a week where 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 I was at an event and the Mm. teens and youth were all flossing and I tried my hardest to floss and I I'm better at flossing in the with like the floss picks I I can't really Dennis always tells me I never do it enough Mm. you know okay Here's the thing. One time I went there and they just said it looked great. And I was just like, what? Mm. Yeah, that that it can happen. It's just rare. Very. I still say Rob did the best floss. The D&D campaign that I've been running for pretty much a year came to an end due to IRL stuff for one of our players. Their character got captured and the party sort of decided that that's where we should stop. Um, We've brought in a new fourth player and we've now started the official dragon heist book campaign which is really fun our party is very weird we have a kenku who's a cleric of death a azama who's a wizard but he's also he's a necromancer we have a uh centaur paladin and a minotaur ranger so it's a very weird party as it were hey Every adventurer comes in all multiple shapes and sizes. Mm. That that is very true. And um, yeah, so at the moment they're looking for a missing person because of uh, what was his name, Volo, the guy who wrote Volo's Guide to Monsters, asked them to find a friend of his. So that's who they're on the lookout for at the moment. Nice. And I've definitely always wanted to get into D and I even bought the D and D starter guide started opening it up my head swarmed and i said i'm just going back to video games but yeah. i'm there is somebody that i'm working on they they have a group that's starting up they're, they're going to go very easy for our first D, but i may mm. be getting into a D group soon oh that's awesome three three of my players are that was their first and this is now their second campaign ever the first person is sort of the guy who knows a bit of everything and is just happy to sit back and just let let them do what they need to. And, and if he needs to step up and be like, well, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Nice. But I'm, I'm the DM. So when I need to, I, I pull the, pull the reins as it were. Nice. So, so in, in WoW, you, you hold the reins and then in the D and D you hold the reins. Exactly. Nice. Well, and you know, sometimes it's nice to show somebody something new. So my nephew always wanted to stream and he always wanted to see what it was like so he was over last weekend and he was like you know what let's stream your first game so we streamed Jurassic Park he had a blast Twitch was going crazy they were having a lot of fun and they were just actually it was the same time that PewDiePie was playing with Ninja I believe or with that ice somebody was playing somebody on Twitch and Twitch was being DDoS so half the chat was down for a while but yeah, it was. Was John Cena there? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see him. Sounds about right. I learned that tonight. Thanks to Spaz. Spaz helped me learn that joke. <laughs> but yeah, he, he had a great time. So we also did the Stanley Parable in Arkham Asylum. And Stanley Parable, if you don't know, there is a new version of Stanley Parable coming out. And I either be an upgrade or free if people already own it. But yeah, he, he loved it. 
and I, I sat next to him the whole time and commentated on what he was doing. Maybe in the future, he, he says that he wants to be a streamer in the future. So I was showing him that it's not all sunshine and roses. I mean, there's a lot of work involved with it, but it's fun. Did you take him down to the troll farm? No, not not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the real reality of being a streamer? Yes. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, the troll farm. we didn't have any trolls. I mean, I've had trolls, but we didn't have oh, any that's trolls. That's lucky. That's lucky. The, the, you can't really help when you get those. With WoW, though, it's hard to hard to stop having trolls because like there are different yeah. trolls. And, I, and I'm actually working on a getting a troll. So I'm working on getting my Zandalari troll. So in WoW, working on Tides of Vengeance storyline for the two sides of every story. And I finished the first of the Tides of Vengeance. So I've got one of three quests done for that. And then I'm also working on the rep for Zandalari trolls and Magra Orcs. Finally, after so many weeks and weeks and weeks, my genome project gnome is now level 50. So I've been leveling with Michael every Wednesday. We do like an, about an hour every week. And it's finally level 50. We're over in Red Ridge and we're going to avenge my iron who died there. But you know what? We're going to go from Red Ridge over to an event in California that just happened. So E3 just happened. And last year I had Spaz on and we had a great time talking about E3. And I was like, you know what? I love just geeking out about games and just taking a week. Some of our favorite things, because you actually got me onto it. You were the one who then a few months later, I ended up buying a PC and I'm having a lot of fun. Now I got an Xbox. So our chat inspired me to start playing other games. It took me so long to get you to get a PC and an Xbox, despite me telling you for years that not only do they go hand in hand, a lot of people use them. Yes. But you're like, nah, I got my Mac. I'm good. I don't I don't need that. It does everything that all the other things do. I'm like, it doesn't. And I, I found out, yeah, the Mac's good. And I love the Mac for editing. And I'll be editing this show on the Mac. But I love the gaming on the PC and we're recording on the PC. Mm-hmm. I remember I remember when you made that switch to Mac. I remember that. Yeah. I've seen the video. Where they pranked you and did they give you an, was it an empty box or they give you a lamp in an IMAX, no. in an IMAX box? Funny story on that. That was, they gave me a, a box first. Yes. And then I opened up and there was like, like my Christmas present in it. Then under a blanket was an IMAX. Yeah. Well, guess what I ended up doing? Didn't you brick that IMAX pretty quickly? Yep. <laughs> like within 30 minutes or something. Like it was like, How? like it's in the video. When you brick the, like he turned it on. Like that's how he bricked the iMac was he turned it on. Yes. I don't know what I did, but I did something and it literally would not turn on past. Do you have that video anywhere in your old archives? Cause I'd go dig that one up. It might be on YouTube or it might be on the hard drive. Is YouTube your archive? Uh, is that, that archive.org? I've got that somewhere, but I can't remember because I've got a ton of oh, hard drive okay. and I, I, I lost was, about. I managed to dig up diseased cow. I was proud of that. Well, mortified, but like <laughs> diseased cow. Diseased cow. Yep. I fully deserve to have that brought back in my face, though. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> our, 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 our past is, ooh, Eric and I go way back. A lot of different things, a lot of videos. Yeah. So at E3, I'd say we're going to go at kind of event by event, and we're going to kind of talk about our some of our favorite things from there. So let's start with the Xbox event. So Spaz, what was your favorite things from there? Oh, it had to be the Cyberpunk 2077 reveal. Oh, yes. The whole video and then the camera panning up and it's bloody Keanu Reeves. And then he comes out on stage and he just, he looks like he's having the best time ever. Like he apparently doesn't, doesn't have Twitter, doesn't use social media at all. He has no idea that the internet has memed him to hell and back. And he, <laughs> there was an interview where somebody actually explained it to him, and he went, that is the best thing I've ever seen. I cannot wait for more. And I'm just like, how, yeah. does, how does he not know that he's one of the biggest memes in the world? And now that he's in Cyberpunk 2077, which is basically it means that he has and will live forever, if you've seen the photos of him, throughout his life he doesn't age so he's yeah. going to be the same age looking the same in 2077 so <laughs> wow this is by the creators of the witcher 3 in, in uh, cd project red and stuff like that and mm-hmm. this looks amazing like didn't they take what they learned from the witcher 3 and move it to a sci-fi universe yeah so cyberpunk has existed for a very long time it's actually a tabletop role-playing game and this has been in the work for years 
years. So very long. Is there any relation to Snow Crash? Because I know that was the book that inspired a world in active roles. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I, I haven't read Snow Crash. Okay. Because that one is the one about like virtual worlds you go into. Maybe I'm thinking virtual worlds versus like cyberpunk. Mm. But yeah, so that's looking at April 16th, 2020. And I, I'm definitely, definitely happy for that. Yeah, that that was weird seeing all these 2020 dates, which in my head, that's like the crazy future. And yeah. It's like, no, that's like three months for like, it's so close. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that still sounds bizarre. But I, I, I suppose that every time the decade changes, which isn't all that often, it's always weird, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, at least we have 2020 vision this year. Yeah. I mean, I technically still do until they tell me I don't. I don't and- have 2020 vision. I'm if, 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 if it isn't for some of the tests, I'm borderline yeah. on on uh, fasting the vision test. So don't okay. drive behind me. <laughs> All right. Don't drive behind you. All right. I'll try not to. Well, I mean, I saw that about the Lego expansion of Forza 4. Yes. Horizon 4, which is funny to me because Forza, like motorsport is like a, like a really serious driving simulator sort of game. And then you have horizon, which is based in the same kind of thing. The physics are a little fudged with, so you can kind of do a little bit crazier stuff, but how they've been expanding that to crazier things. Like with horizon three, they did hot wheels, which was one of the coolest things I've ever played. Cause then they built an Island that was just hot wheels tracks everywhere with like the turbo boost and the loops and the turns and oh, all that cool stuff. How did and that? actual drivable hot wheels, which was so cool. So seeing the Lego thing, it feels very much in the nature. Seeing this, the, the very realistic Europe setting that the game is set in, but populated by all the little Lego people is really, it's really weird. It's really but confusing. I like what I hope, and I don't know, because I only saw it very briefly, but that uh, the damage modeling for the Lego cars is just Lego pieces falling off yes. of the car. I hope. I don't know if that's what would actually happen, but it just, it seems like it would be so obvious, but... Um, it makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm going to play it. I saw that and I was like, well, that there's a week of videos. Uh, also, the Halo Infinite trailer, loved it. Yes, mm, loved that. And I'm excited for that because, like, I make like this is gonna be my first Halo that I can get into from the main day because I now I got all the consoles for it. Well, you won't have the console for this. Well, the Master Chief Collection is coming to PC, and they're actually releasing yeah. them in chronological order. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's cool. I think Reach is first, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no yeah, and they're, and they're gonna be ten bucks each, basically. And I think that's fantastic. Though it's going to be part of the Xbox uh, Game Pass, if I understand right, the Master Chief Collection. Yeah, uh, I have no idea. I don't have an Xbox. I don't know about the Game Pass. Okay, it sounds right. Yeah, and and uh, what we brought up the Xbox Ultimate Game Pass. So they had the Xbox Game Pass where you could buy Xbox buy a subscription and you get Xbox games. Then they had it for a little while that if it's games on it was on PC, they would give you the Xbox game for the game pass on your pc so then they decided to bridge it out and it makes sense for like they want to beef up the pc version of it so you have your xbox game pass for pc and you have your xbox game pass for console yeah but if you combine them together they will also give you xbox live gold so for 15 dollars a month you get everything together in one pass and you can get game for pc for xbox and live if you have xbox live already they will give you like a redemption period so they'll up, they'll upgrade i wasn't the smart one to like i had i have xbox live gold but i did not add on to it because the tip i've heard is add on to it ahead of time someone said they have theirs paid through at least 2021 or 2022 and an interesting game that came out of nowhere is fantasy star online 2 oh no it didn't come out of nowhere it came out of uh, the east where yeah. <laughs> nobody nobody in the west knew about it um and it's a huge mmo and they're finally bringing it to the rest of the world and i remember playing fantasy star online on my sister's xbox because they had the, the xbox and they did it online and i was like this looks so cool because like you you have a little hub worlds and you go out and, and adventure and i always wanted to play it but then by that time i got an xbox live and then i forgot about fantasy star and, and i wanted to go back on to this and finally it's gonna be pc and xbox and i think there's crossplay. Uh, that would, that's likely probably. 
and I've heard that this will be free to play, but then with micro microtransactions, which makes sense, get people hooked, yeah. and then give mm -hmm. them just like in Fortnite, get get those, those those skins. Here's the thing: every kid that has ever spent even a dime on Fortnite is a sucker because literally, what's what's the point? It's the same game over and over and over again, over and over and over again, and like functionally wise, you can do the same things, and it it you know I don't know. I think it's like I already don't like Fortnite as it is but having a youtube gaming show like <laughs> the will of the audience sometimes comes down upon me and i have to play it anyway i still don't like it i'm not huge into the battle royale games anyway just because it's like somebody who like i play a million games more kind of casually then you have the ones who just play Fortnite and that's all they do and they're like Fortnite gods then you go up against those people and they i don't know why it's fun for them because there's no competition for them and it's not fun for everybody else playing with them because you can't do anything yeah, it's, yeah. It, you, you shoot one bullet at them and all of a sudden there's a bloody medieval castle in front of you and it's like <laughs> i right. don't even know how they built that thing yeah, yeah exactly but the thing yeah. is, Fantasy Star Online 2, they have said that it is cross-play between Xbox One and PC. However, they have stated that it will be coming to PS4 later, but they have not yeah. made any notion of when. But Spring 2020 is currently the PC and Xbox One release date. Nice. I, I'm definitely gonna be picking this up because I I want to relive some of that that Fantasy Star and like and I don't know how like how heavily I'll play, but. It look. I remember as a kid, it was a cool game. I was I was looking forward to. And the next one for me would probably be Age of Empires Two Definitive Edition. Basically, it's not. There's already a remastered version of Age of Empires Two, but this is way more than that. They've completely rebuilt the game. It seems from ground up. It looks absolutely amazing. And the one thing I'm looking forward to is being able to zoom out more uh, while playing because. The HD version is so annoying that you can't zoom out. Like the camera is stuck at a certain distance <laughs> and it really annoys me. Me and a couple of my mates, we would at least two, maybe three times a month jump on Age of Empires to uh, load up like four AI that are the hardest difficulty and we just build walls around them and just annoy the shit out of them for like an hour, like good couple hours until we finally destroyed them or they quit. Nice. Well done. Well done. It, it, it makes sense that they would let you zoom out more because they the engine, they, they, they probably made it because it probably was like a limitation of the engine. I, I, I remember the epic battles that you could have in Age of Empires. Hmm. And, uh, and Eric, um, yeah. I'll, I'll have you take the uh, micro dungeons. The what? Minecraft dungeons. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take it. Oh, Minecraft dungeons. Yes. <laughs> I heard micro dungeons and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. That looks pretty cool. I like that they are branching out with the Minecraft storyline and kind of bringing out different types of games. Like they have the the survival, then yeah. the the creative. Mm -hmm. And my only hope with it is that they don't have it go to the way of story mode where the game goes off the, the digital store. Yeah, story mode was <sighs> interesting. Yes, what I was hoping story mode was going to be was. It's still Minecraft, but now there's just kind of a story thread written through it. And it was not that at all. It was like Lego Minecraft, basically. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's like Lego Star Wars and stuff. Like, it, it felt exactly like that. And it felt it didn't really feel like it was a game. It just kind of felt like a point and click and then watch another cutscene kind of. Yeah, game. Mm, it was a point and, and click adventure, uh, pretty much. Yeah, I but starting with minecraft where it's you can build anything you want and you know make stuff and the, it just felt so empty and watered down it didn't really feel like it was anything really it felt like the uh like when you get in a cutscene in a game where it just wants you to push a button for a second and then it keeps playing the next part of the cutscene. yes i would hope that that this is much more kind of like oh you wanted to do dungeons well here like where it's like going to fight the ender dragon but that's kind of the whole game yeah that's kind of my hope for it because ender dragon was always a weird fight in minecraft i mean combat was always kind of strange in minecraft it, and yeah this seems a lot more built for it i've heard it yeah. described as like the diablo of minecraft oh okay yeah and it, 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 it kind of makes sense because it's, it's top down and you're yeah. going through different zones i wonder if you'll be able to build stuff i hope you can because that's that is so much of what minecraft is 
is building stuff. Yeah. So if you take out the building, it might as well be a Lego game. You see, you know what I mean? And good news, I I just found out that it is developed by Mojang. So the good thing is, only story mode. Have they developed a Minecraft game in years? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think they have because it's been out, like other developers. No, it was ha- it was handed over to um, another company. Yeah, that okay. escapes me. I can't remember the name because it started with the Java, then they again, then yeah, they outsourced the ports to it, right? And then they've kind right. of moved it all the all the, those to that one, it seems like. Yeah, and then you have Pocket Edition, who's run by somebody, and and yeah, th- th- they said it's going to be the uh, I thought overall Microsoft took it, yeah, that's right, they, yeah. they own it, did, but I think they kind of dished out different versions to different um companies okay. to sort of just look after. They're like, this yeah. is the overall plan. How you implement it is how you implement it, but it has to sort of be the yeah. same. Because I'm I'm right. sure one studio couldn't manage the Bedrock Edition, the Java Edition, the mobile version, the PlayStation, yeah. the Xbox. They they couldn't yeah. theoretically, but I think they've sort of done their best. Yeah, yeah. and it, yeah, I agree. for how many places it is, it is. I'm impressed at how they reached it, and that's why yeah. it's interesting that they're continuing that idea like using the, the the story and the feel of the minecraft world and i think it'll be kind of cool if, if we get to do some more stuff i'm the screenshots and videos i've seen of this look amazing i'm definitely going to play play this when it comes out i mean because I, I played story mode for a little bit then i got lost interest yeah but you know i think one that would we won't be able to lose interest is so spaz i think you and i at some point need to get on a couch together with another person and mm-hmm. play battle toads Oh, Battletoads. Yes, I have Battletoads. <laughs> it's, oh my god, this looks amazing, and I cannot wait for it. It's ridiculous. It, it looks awesome. From what I've heard, it plays well. Even the dreaded motorbike levels and stuff play really well, but it's still hard as heck. So <laughs> that's definitely definitely one thing. And for, definitely for like being on the couch with your friends that, that that can be a having a hard game can be fun because like one of you wins stuff like that and and like i never got into battletoads when it was first out but i've heard about battletoads and, and we've heard rumors of battletoads here and there for a long time but yes. we're finally seeing it just just don't just when it comes out don't ask your local pawn shop if they have battletoads is that a, is that a <laughs> meme yes <laughs> Uh, okay, yep. I, I'm, I'm not hip on the memes. I mean, I, it's oh a, it was gosh. a long, it was a very long running joke where this person kept calling their local pawn shop to ask them if they had battle toads, and the guy on who would answer would just keep getting more and more infuriated. Yeah, every single time. Like there was one time where the guy calls up and he's like, "Yeah, I'm looking for um, a camera," and he's like, "Oh, I thought you I thought you were one of those people calling up about battle toads," and the guy's like, "Battle toads? That sounds awesome. Do you guys have that?" And he just hangs <laughs> up. <laughs> such a good bait and switch like it's just it's a yeah. really old dumb meme yeah oh yeah kids don't do that please don't call it up your pawn shops it may look funny on the on the tv but being in the on the other I side i promise you it's also funny in real life no uh... <laughs> <laughs> And you know something else that's not that's not been funny for a little while. How we've been getting amazing Star Wars ideas, and Star Wars mm-hmm. has always been turning around, and be like, "Nope, the game's canceled," or "Nope, the game's gonna be garbage" and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think we may actually be getting a good Star Wars games in a long time. I hope so, but uh, that's cautiously optimistic. I'm looking at that and I'm like, "That's that. It looks great." But here's the thing. You can make anything look great for E3. Yes. That's easy. If it's actually good. That's a whole nother story. That, yeah. It's a whole nother story. Oh, my the God. Galaxy remember, far I mean, away. Case in point. Remember how psyched people were last E3 about Fallout 76? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, look at that now. And then, oh, my. I mean, look at Fallout 76 I, this year. They're making a lot of uh, promises, but a uh, lot of people have faith that they will deliver. And... I don't know. It's just it's they're not gonna. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people have given they may, them. I think they're they're a company that makes trailers and then they put out a game, but mm. it has nothing to do with the trailers they put out half the time. They're very ambitious. Well, speaking of yeah. Uh, yeah. speaking of of trailers, did you see the um the Keanu Reeves intro to Cyberpunk? And then when it turns to the screen, the screen goes black and it turns into the beginning of Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. No. 
I did see that. That was great. I saw that. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, Jedi Phone Order. This is going to be a single player game. It's being developed by Respawn Entertainment, who did Titanfall. So th- they have a good track record. I mean, well, at least for the first Titanfall. I can't say anything about Titanfall 2 because yeah that wasn't and is apparently it's going to be after episode three so it looks good i'm he- I'm, I'm i'm optimistic cautiously optimistic is exactly cautiously I, optimistic, yeah. Yeah. but if that one lets me down then it'll be lego star wars so that like, they're going to be rebooting the franchise with lego star wars the skywalker saga and those games have always been good like the lego yes. games off the top of my head i don't know who's developed them but they have always put the utmost care into the setting and just the Lego bits around the outside are just really fun. Yeah. And I love how you can just keep playing it. And like, like it's the same mechanic every single time, but I have fun. I I went to Lego city undercover and I had a great time at that. And I'm going to go to Lego Incredibles. You know what Lego game I wish. And this is going deep cut for him. So if there's any of you Mm -hmm. youngsters out there, listening right now, you're not talking about, I would love to see Lego Island three. I would love to see them mess Ooh. up and give the Brick- yes. Brickster a pizza a third time and he gets out. I would be into that because those those yes. were just I I don't know. I really I really enjoyed those games. I played so much of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to do Lego after game of the week. I'm th- here's the thing. I have to find a playable version yeah. of Lego and- Island. That game is so old that I can actually like record footage of. Lego, so. If you could even just re-release Lego Island. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm if, so happy. If, if, like. Maybe skip Lego Island 2. I did not enjoy Lego Island 2. I, that one was the PS2 version. I would play Lego Island 2 again. PS2. Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Lego Island 2. Which version did you play? I play the PS1 version. Let me tell you. Like, it was playing a watered down okay, bad I never... graphics version of, a, of Lego Island 2. I did do that on Game of the Week. Uh, that was, that well, was my New Year's I just game. Found, That's my New Year's. I just found Lego Island on GOG. Oh, and it has over 1,200 wants. It doesn't exist, oh. but there are over 1,200 people who are saying they want it. I'm uploading that right now. I just uploaded that. Yes. And you, but yes. You, you I almost up for had that. me so excited for one second because as soon as you just said, like, it was on the. Yeah. I was like, I, yeah. I thought it was, was like, on GOG, on. but when I clicked on it, it's like, this is a wish list page. I was like, oh, damn. But yeah, that. Even yeah. Like, so I was like, all right, rest of night and being productive. Yeah. There, there, there it goes. Uh, like, <laughs> this show is going to stop right here. We're, we're going to end this right here, and we're going to go on. We're going to go on instead of about the new yeah. games. <laughs> and one interesting thing that happened, speaking of like games that, that are classics, Psychonauts. So before we get into Psychonauts 2, the mm-hmm. interesting thing that came out of it was Double Fine, who's been the, the indie darling, is no longer an independent studio. It could be a bad thing. There are instances like Pixar where it actually ends up being okay. Yeah. I don't know. It could be terrible. I think Tim Schafer has enough industry sort of clout yeah. that if a studio exec turns around and says, no, you have to do X, he can be like, I am Tim Schafer. You're telling me what to do. Like Hideo Kojima. Yeah. Like people yeah. turned around and were just like, no, you can't make the game you want. He's like, well, I'm going to go found my own studio. Yeah. And they all went, oh, no, we messed yeah. up. And now he's making Death Stranding. With- yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm impressed. They are keeping it cross platform. So even with Double Fine being bought by Microsoft, it's still going to go out. Second Arts 2, which is coming out, is going to go to all the platforms. Mm. So I am in. With Tim, that, Tim Schafer probably made that promise that it was going to be on all platforms. And when Microsoft bought them, they were just like, Oh, we cannot look like the bad guys being like, It's no longer cross platform, yeah, because it doesn't do much for them. No, and they they won a lot of cred by being one of the proponents of cross platform play between like Fortnite and stuff like that in Rocket League. So, Microsoft it's, right it's now is actually bloody, like, I think it's PlayStation that's being, or is it Xbox? No, it, it's, it's PlayStation. Xbox has been the one that they were fine for a while. And even like at some point, Nintendo is actually going to be working with Microsoft on some of their cloud, right? at least for Xbox Live, but maybe even for Xbox, for the Xbox Cloud. But yeah, Psychonauts 2 looks really good. And I, I love Psychonauts 1. And that, that that game was just like, it's it's a cult classic. And I'm excited for Psychonauts 2, where they're going with it. I just hope it's not like some sequels where when you get into it, you're like, oh, I wish it just stopped at it. What would be an example of a sequel that did that to you? For me, that would have to be I'm trying to think of a, of a recent game sequel. Movie wise, I, 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 yeah, I was gonna say I can think of sure. movies where they're like 
oh god, maybe you shouldn't have made that second one. Yeah, a lot. A lot of the times when a, a second game is made, they introduce something new, mechanic wise. They do something with the story. They make it fresh, yeah. and so that it's not just literally the same game again. Yeah. Whereas movies are just like it's literally the same movie. It's either the same like, movie, and they go to Europe. It's one of those things, like. <laughs> yeah. It seems like every sequel, it seems like 50% of the time they're going to okay. Europe. And everybody, I've got an announcement on this show. Fazlecast 2 will be coming out, and we are all going to Europe. <laughs> Does Australia count? Can you come to Australia instead? I'm down Absolutely, for that. yeah. We will fly Thist out back again, like because this was just there. So we'll fly them back out again, and we'll all have a Europe road trip. <laughs> I like that we would well, I'm actually, um, go to Europe to record a podcast that would sound exactly oh, yeah. the same. <laughs> hey, yeah. well, I mean, right now we could be in Europe. You, n- We're you never totally know. Totally in right Europe. Now, can- I'm in Eurasia. Mm. And like right now, to uh, break the fourth wall for audio listeners, you can't see us on stream because our bandwidth had to go down for stuff like that. So you never know where we could be. And there is a game, though, that looks really good. Their sequel was good. And the third one, looks really good and the reason why i think it's gonna be really good they're not messing with the formula yeah they're interesting a few different things but they're gonna give us more guns so borderlands with three and with legs yes oh i cannot wait for this oh i know it looks so good and it's one i want to do co-op and all that on pc because it's not as much fun when you write yourself but but i had so much fun with borderlands one in co-op i never did two in co-op that's what was why i didn't enjoy it as much oh I, ha- I have a story about borderlands one a buddy of mine uh, and I were playing couch co-op. We spent a full weekend. We practically didn't sleep trying to do all three of the insane difficulty, mad moxie dungeons, like the arena fighter ones. We got two of them. We didn't manage to get the third one. And we were so tired by the end of it. It was hilarious. It was awesome. We were so delirious by the end of it. We had no idea what was going on. Ugh. Nice. You, you had a lot of fun, though, the memories. Oh, yeah. I can barely remember it. <laughs> but I know it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, And what would you say if you could play that on the go? I'd be happy. So Xbox is introducing two ways to play the Xbox on the go. You can already do in-home streaming. Well, they're adding the way to also stream it to your phone just like the PS4 has had it and like Steam Link has it. They're going to be, you're going to be doing beta testing in October, but you'll be able to stream your console to home. But tell me that you don't have good bandwidth or you don't have an Xbox One. I don't have either of those. Well, then this next one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> so xCloud is their version of an Xbox in the cloud. So, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you'll be able to play these games in the cloud. So they're, they're making a push just the same way that Google Stadia is having a, a play with it. And oh. kind of how Sony has it with PS Now and OnLive. Well, OnLive had it, Gaikai, and then Sony bought Gaikai and OnLive. So Microsoft is bringing out their version of it. So xCloud means that X can going to give it to you no matter where you are. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Which can be good because what if when they inc- increase the X Cloud? They also give you the ability to play Scarlet. So Scarlet is the new Xbox that's coming out. We still don't have a lot of details, but I did hear like they have the AMD processor, one of the newest ones because it's going to be on it. If I understand it, it's coming out. We're still a couple years away from the from Scarlet, but it's it is their next Xbox. Yeah. And it's going to be backwards compatible with Xbox One games. All Xbox One games will work on it. And all of the other backwards compatibility games will work on Scarlet. So unfortunately, we are getting rid of any additional Xbox One original Xbox and Xbox 360 backwards compatibility because they're now working on getting it where Scarlet can work with all games backwards. So they, they've moved that team on to Scarlet. So as of right now, I, I could see at some point they turn around and be like, oh, and by the way, here's another game. Mm, well, there will be a point where people will, you know, stores will say, trade in your Xbox One for a hundred bucks off the, the whatever the Scarlet is called. And for a lot of people, that will be enough incentive to be like, I traded my old Xbox and I can play everything, my entire Xbox collection on this new one. Yeah. That's that yeah. like a great thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it'll help the launch. It's going to help the fact that because the, the, the PS5, which Sony was not at the show, so we won't talk about Sony much, but P- the PS5 is going to be backwards compatible with, with the PS4. Yes. I'm glad that this next console launch, you can play in the old one, still play your games. But if you upgraded the new one, you can go back and play your old games. You, know, you don't have to be going between two different devices that so you can basically say, I'm done with this one. 
On to the yeah. next one. Are we also done with this one and on to the next one in regards to conferences? Oh, that's a, that's a good segue. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well done. Like a professional. <laughs> yes. I, I feel like you've listened to the show a few times. Maybe a few times. Hmm. Speaking so, of so this, yeah. I'm... Yeah. So the, the next one is Bethesda. Yep. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, I'll have you start out with, because there's one game on here that we have highlighted. Yeah, so... Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. It was a quick preview. It looks like some kind of horror mystery game. Ooh. Uh, I'm not sure how far into the horror it is, but it looks basically the premise everybody is joking about. It literally looks like the snap from Infinity War just happened, and you've got to figure out what, why. Ooh. In like the preview trailer, basically people just start disappearing, mm. and that's it. That's all we know. Uh, the only other thing that we do know is that the game director, Ikumi Nakamura, is now an internet sensation and is a meme of her own because she is so adorable and everybody fell in love with her in the three minutes that she was on stage. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at a, a, a compilation of memes right now. And yeah, I, I can absolutely see it. And hmm. they were a artist on Akami, Bayonetta, and The Evil Within. Oh, I didn't actually realize that. I found this from CNET. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm getting into horror games. I'm, I'm starting to like like them, especially if I can stream them because it's fun to have the audience just like mm. uh, like I did a little bit of nightmare. Have you been um, watching Scott Johnson uh, scream his um, playthrough of Resident Evil? T- I mean, stream his playthrough of Resident Evil 2? Oh, not yet. I need to. That, that sounds like, like an awesome thing. But yeah, Go- Ghostwire looks really cool. And, and uh, I'm excited to see where that comes from, from Bethesda. And, it, and I do like that Bethesda tries new things. We got Dishonored which was a great series. Mm, Definitely. Yeah, a lot of the Bethesda stuff is kind of just like games that sort of missed me or I just couldn't be bothered with. New Elder Scrolls, Fallout 76, if anyone cares about that. ESO, I couldn't really get into because I was playing WoW. Rage 2 is getting DLC, but that's kind of like, eh. Apparently Rage 2 is just kind of, the fun factor increases as you play it, but a lot of people say that it's not fun enough to get past that first sort of 10 hours of meh gameplay to unlock the really fun guns and stuff. Yeah. That's the moment with John Goodman, right? Oh, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> yeah. Rage is one that I kept, I, I own a copy because I bought one used at GameStop and I have not played it. Mm. Leo, I'll bring up a good point. ESL, the next one is Dragons and it's going to be called Dragonhold. We definitely have some some, some ESO uh, listeners on, on here and ESO is doing an interesting thing with, with theirs. So, but yeah, I, I'm not fully following ESO because I'm, I'm following WoW. But yeah, looking at this list, it, it is interesting. The Bethesda has a lot of sequels and things like that. They are working on um, a new sort of streaming technology called Orion, yeah. which is a very back end technology that they're building into all their games that makes it easier for them to be streamed. Okay. In terms of all the details, it, it kind of went over my head in terms of what they were talking about. So I'm not really sure how, how it's all going to work. And if where we as players are even going to notice it, like just because the new games coming out are built with this Orion tech, Will it mean anything for us when we're playing it, or is it just to help facilitate the streaming of those games? Yeah, I could see maybe the same way. Like I remember online, they had to build some stuff behind the scenes to make it work better. And I, and I know like at Xbox, they were for a while trying to like stream in stuff to your thing. So I so I could say maybe if if it's optimization, like we'll we'll send you the frames at this way and this way. Maybe that could be a good part of the tech and. The, the one thing that I saw, I, I saw like an, an Ars Technica thing in the comments made a good point. The only thing is, if this is a, another version like the Stadia, why are they trying to do an, their own version instead of going in with some of the, the big names like Microsoft and Google? <laughs> yeah, like I don't I don't get why everybody wants to make themselves a platform now. Yeah. Because yeah. like it's the same with Netflix and stuff. There are so many other subscriptions that to get TV and stuff from, but everybody just defaults to Netflix. So... The people yeah. who are in with the subscription models are first. It's like, wow, even all the MMOs want to be pay by month, make millions of dollars a month, have millions of players, and they all flop because everyone's like, no, we're already paying for wow. We're not, I don't want to pay for anything else. Yeah. So it's it's a hard market to crack. That's for sure. And it is interesting. I mean, if you've worked with Google and, and there's a company that's on our list that's worked with Google, if you're Ubisoft, 
you've definitely been working with Google on Stadia because you did the Project Stream. And in fact, I, I did the Assassin's Creed Project Stream beta and I got Assassin's Creed for free. Nice. Stream was amazing. I did not stream my stream because I didn't want to use double bandwidth. I was getting enough bandwidth to get the game to my computer. And I don't know if Stadia is going to have Twitch streaming, which is one reason why I'm not looking at Stadia at the, at the moment. Mm. If they I, had I, Twitch- I highly doubt Stadia will have Twitch integration. It's more of the, I believe it's more for the players than the streamers because you're not going to want to stream Stadia and then stream on the train or when you're away from home. It doesn't doesn't seem feasible. As a yeah. Word. The one thing I, I would like is the have that fat pipeline from Google to Twitch. Or does this mean that eventually Google will also own Twitch? I <laughs> could see that. I mean, I mean, isn't Google going to own everything? Yeah, eventually? they are. They are. If yeah. you know how mm-hmm. Disney's buying everything, I think yeah. Dis- it, Disney will own movies. Decades from now, when there's only two companies, Disney and Google, which one will eat the other? Well, they'll each own 49% of the other. <laughs> and yeah, I, I got news right. for all of you. Yeah. This podcast is now called Frazzle Chrome. Frazzle Chrome. Got it. Yes. Brought to you by Disney Craft. I understand. <laughs> I just Frazzle Chrome too. Yes. <laughs> so Ubisoft, instead of making it's their own me. system, <laughs> 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 that reference is over my head, but <laughs> a lot of things come from my head because of my height in game. Uh, no, I was no, like, no. what are you but talking yeah. about? You're six foot six. <laughs> Nothing goes over your head. You're so tall. It was a Mad Max reference. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and yes, Bass says Frazzle Chrome 2. Witness me. <laughs> yep. So yeah, Ubisoft is working with Google and all the other ones. They have come out with a Uplay subscription. I was talking with somebody. There's not enough Ubisoft stuff yet. I don't think. I say this now until the Uplay comes out that interests me for a Uplay subscription. But the subscription will get you access to games on Stadia and I believe also on the PC. So it is a pretty cool dual thing where, where you can take your Uplay stuff with you. Speaking of Uplay, they're having a massive sale right now. Yeah? Like everything is, it's up to 90% off most of their games. Ooh, um, a bunch of my friends are all up. playing Wildlands. It's down to like $26. Wow. Yeah, Rainbow Six is 50% off. Watch Dogs 2 is 80% off. I may actually buy that. Oh, do it. That game's fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be... I love that, uh, Watch, Dogs Watch Dogs 2. I played every inch of that game. I love the first one, but I, I just... I guess I missed the second one. Well, the yeah. first one, things that were kind of... That weren't quite right in the first one, because I played the first one also. Some of the things that were a little funny in the first one, they've kind of just fixed and kind of tweaked for two that just kind of cleaned it up real nice. Yeah. The, the first one they, they were trying to be launched for like the PS4 and stuff like that. And I enjoyed the first one, but you, you could tell that they needed stuff to go. I, I love when, when like you were going through like, that's a player. That's not somebody in the game. That's another player trying to hack my game. And I, I enjoyed some of those stuff. Yeah. I enjoyed like the tablet X aspects. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I'm I'm going to pick up watchdogs. Speaking of watchdogs, I can't wait for Legion. I know I, it looks I, so good. Uh, with Ubisoft, Ubisoft made another game that I adored and played literally every possible inch of the game was Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which was also set in London. So I'm hoping that there may be pieces and parts of that game that they used to for the basis of building this one. Just a little oh, bit. Wow. So I'm looking at the store for Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. The standard edition is on sale uh-huh. for 15 Australian dollars. Okay. The gold edition is on sale for thirty Australian dollars. Wow! So these are massive, yeah, massive discounts. Yeah. I'm buying that right now. Do it. So yeah, it's I, worth it. It's fantastic. Instead of one hundred and fifty. Oh yeah. It's yeah, totally. I'm buying the gold edition right now. Actually, I have to be. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to. I've already beaten it. Yeah, Legion looks so cool. Yeah, oh, man. And like that old lady. Yes, in the trailer. Yes, I, <laughs> yeah, I had no oh, idea no. what that was. She and then just, she just walks she up. She taps and, the guy yeah. on the shoulder yeah. and then just shoots him in the face. Yeah. Oh my oh, god. Oh, I love that. And like, I mean, I was already a thousand percent sold. I was already like, take my money. But at that point, like, I'm like, here is access to my bank account. Just keep my money. Like, yeah. all money I will fu- like make in the future. Like, if I wasn't sold before, I was by then. And I was fully already sold on it. But... Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it looks I love, so good. I love the way they've done it, too. Like, they've taken the default sort of 
you know, oh, in, in the first game, you could you could look at someone and you could see the silly things yeah. about them. Yeah. And now they're just like, you know what? We're going to take that to its next logical step and just make everybody hackable. Yeah. And everybody has information about them everywhere. Yeah. It's, oh my God, I, I, I didn't even imagine what this game could be. Uh-huh. And they have just completely destroyed any expectations that I didn't have. Yeah. I'm sad that I got to wait till March. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wish uh, there are so many so there are away. so many games that are just like this time in 2020 and I'm just like what about tomorrow? Yeah, how about, can it be tomorrow? It looks done. It looks it looks great. It looks it done does. now. Watch Dogs Legion tomorrow, yeah. Breakpoint tomorrow, yeah. Quarantine tomorrow, Division tomorrow. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I was actually literally for uh for my I mean, YouTube Pokemon tomorrow. Yeah, for my yeah. Uh, YouTube show literally was recording the Division 2 today. And I was digging the hell out of that. Well, they're turning it into a movie, so I will dig the hell out of that too. Yeah. And as a, as a joke that I heard, um, I was watching the press conference via another stream, and they're like, "The division, the movie," and then someone's like, "The movie, the game, 2022," and I was like, "Oh god, <laughs> I could see that." I could see that. Uh, yeah, I like that though. I could honestly see them turning the movie into DLC for the for Division Two. Yeah, and then the, the, the book, was. the movie, the game, the book, the book. <laughs> <laughs> on Audible now. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you the thing, honestly, and this is going to sound funny that I was glad I did not see them announce was another Assassin's Creed. Be- yes. Because like, I love me Assassin's Creed and I will play them until the day I die. But oh, I have what, every collector's edition yep. statue except the first game because yeah. I didn't have the money back then. Right. When they go every single year, sometimes it the quality can kind of start to suck a little bit. Because, like... Yeah. They're pumping out so much DLC for Odyssey. I know. Still. I love Odyssey so It's much. awesome. It, it's fantastic. That game is so big. Yeah. Mm. and Oh, my God. And, and I love... It feels so good. I mean, it feels like they've learned so much. Oh, they have. It, well, it, yeah. they kind of yeah. started from oh. scratch with Origins. It kind of felt like they went... They took everything they had done and like, all right, we're going to wipe that over there. And like the the five things that really kind of were working, we'll keep those. We're going to put them over. We're going to make it better. But kind of it felt very fresh when they started yes. over with that. And then Odyssey yeah. felt like a really Although, nice extension. I love the fact that everyone's just like, oh, Cassandra is such the better um, player. And yes, I know canonically she is the main character. Yeah. But I played as Alexios, mm-hmm. and I loved the fact that he was so dumb in the game, <laughs> and that the ultimate mastermind of the thing yeah. spoilers turns out to be your not dead sibling. Yeah, and I was like, it makes so much more sense oh, that yeah. she is the mastermind behind. Oh all that. yeah, but I've, oh yeah. <laughs> but then again, I've seen versions of it where he seems like he's the mastermind, but really he's just an idiot, and everybody yeah. else is controlling him. And I'm like, that actually kind of works too. But yeah. like the way I played it. Looked worked out so much better the only thing that bothered me about alexios is his voice it's is he doing batman or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's why people complain they're like uh, that's my uh, one and it is it is the smallest complaint i can fully look past it it's just it's every time he talks i'm like all right but that means that and batman people people sat in a room together and decided yeah this is the direction we should go with this <laughs> Yeah, because Cassandra, like the voice acting on her is fantastic. Yes, and everybody loves it. Yeah, and then yeah, you got Greek Batman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all right. I'm looking forward to Ghost Recon Break. Mm-hmm. When I heard that this is the one where you go onto a utopian world on an island and you're trying to break. Oh, it's, into- it's not I- a utopia. That's for sure. A game yeah. set in a utopia is going to be pretty boring. That's called Minecraft. Well, no. It's supposed yeah. to be a utopia. Aurora's supposed to be kind of that utopian. Oh, place I got you. Go I got you. I got you. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of that West World. I like. I've always loved the things where things don't go the way they're supposed to. I mean, it's I like like Bioshock. You you're going down to the place and you're mm-hmm. you're entering a place that's supposed to be good. Oh, it is anything but good. Yeah. yeah. The mechanics in the game look so interesting. I've got a bunch of my friends into Wildlands because of uh, Breakpoint. And I believe ten- tonight or tomorrow we're going to be playing the hell out of it because, like, Wildlands itself is fun, but I have a feeling that Breakpoint's going to be that extra layer of just difficulty. Yeah, 
because like broken legs and stuff like that. And the, the fact that, you know, if you mess up, it's not just all the enemies in this little base are going to come after you. If you run away, they're going to send like a massive squadron of drones to find you. And they're not going to stop hunting you until you evade multiple layers of like security, basically, because you're literally four people stuck on an island with whatever weapons and stuff you have against a literal high tech army. And it's oh, it's going to nice. be so good. That excites me. And, and like setting itself up for like some amazing adventures. And I could see that one actually being a lot of fun in Stadia. I mean, I could see that one being one where I like, give it a beefy computer and you're all connected on your phones and like, hey, you don't have a PC with you? No problem. Just open up your phone and uh, hook up you. And, and the cool thing about the all these different cloud things with the streaming, they just announced on Apple devices, you can now hook up your Xbox and PlayStation controllers to them and use them as controllers. Mm. Yeah, so a, a LAN party is even easier with Stadia. Everybody just brings a TV and a controller and yeah. you can just go. You know, whoever's house it is can yeah, you can use their own they can use their own computer, but everybody else gets pretty much the same thing as long as the internet connection is good enough to support like four to six people. Like Yeah, and and, and that's where all, all these streaming services fall down is that that connection to the to the cloud. Like OnLive had its issues so I still remember I I had a friend over one time and we were playing Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and we just beat the heck out of that. And it was all over, over the internet. And it was cool. And one of the cool things about OnLive is it streamed from the their data centers to the thing. So I had people watching me stream on OnLive. As long as their connection to OnLive was good, it didn't matter whatever was happening. So yeah, that's some of the stuff that excites me about this all this tech that they announced everywhere is the possibilities. There's a lot of mm-hmm. hurdles to get to before we get there, but I, I'm excited that we're seeing advances in that. Leo Bob brings up a, a very good point. A lot of places have data caps on the internet. I mean, even my connection, if I didn't have direct TV on it, we would be capped. I mean, and uh, let me tell you, even these streams take up all, um, I, I go up to over a terabyte of data a month. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I got to catch, I, I got to catch up to you. Damn. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like I've seen like the reports of, like everybody's online complaining about, oh, video games is ruining internet, using up too much bandwidth, blah blah blah. I, I've seen like the the reports to show how much bandwidth games use an hour versus streaming stuff. People that are streaming in Netflix 4K are using a hundred times as much bandwidth as me playing Rainbow Six Siege. Oh yeah, like yeah, seriously. And they're complaining that I'm using the internet. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, to be fair, this stream expert tells me that this is been about 1.3 gigabytes for the data being sent across the internet but i'm also not streaming so if you know i'm actually not streaming our video right now and then another co-op game that ubisoft announced was rainbow six quarantine yeah so if you've played siege you and remember the um outbreak uh, event that they did which was basically a zombie horde uh kind of left for dead style Ooh. four operators go in to complete an objective or four defenders are stuck in a house to guard certain things. Um, It's that, but it's three players, and that's all we know. They have absolutely no details other than it's using Rainbow Six Siege technology, operators, and gameplay. So it seems like it's they've taken Siege. They're going to now basically add another game on top of it. I cannot wait. The more we know, the better. The only problem I have is in the reveal trailer, there was an operator named Vigil who was wearing the black mask. His ability in Siege is that he can go invisible to drones. And at the start of a round, the attackers each get a drone to drive around and find like the bomb or the hostage. And he just he can turn himself invisible from them. My question is, does he turn himself invisible from the zombies? Or is there something else to it? Because it would make no sense to play as Vigil if the zombies can just see you. I'm racking my brain as to why he would be a viable character, unless they completely change his kit. But I don't know. And that's the worst part about previews. You don't know anything about the game, and I've got to wait till 2020 to play it. Uh, It's 2020 is so far away still. It's still like way in the future. (laughs) I know. I mean, it's It's only my birthday. Yeah. Then another game that is far away. But I think the internet's hyped for it. I'm actually hyped for it because it's near my birthday. So Square Enix has announced a Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh, they announced that like 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> but we're finally getting it now, now. We're now we finally have a release date that they're going to change, and it's pretty cool. How they're doing it that, that they're yeah. they're renewing it and releasing it in episodes. So I I think that's actually really smart. Get it done instead of making you wait for another twenty years. How does everybody feel about the remasters of games that there's been the trend of in the last five years or so? I don't know. I I like remastered games. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't need to remaster a game from one generation ago. Yeah. So yeah, how about you remaster Banjo Kazooie? How about that? I oh, would yeah. love that. Or because he's now in Smash, make a good third game. Pretend that nuts and bolts never exactly. exist. Yes. Because that yeah. was not a Banjo Kazooie game. Yes. That was no. not. That was no. That's a perfect example of a video game sequel that did not live up to what it should have been banjo Tooie was great banjo Tooie was amazing yeah one of my biggest things that i, I tried playing banjo because I'll, I'll try playing it more but the camera controls oh those drove me nuts <laughs> oh yeah because you only had one stick on the n60 yeah. One, yeah. one stick three bananas yeah uh, eric was on the one i was trying to get through the water level with the sharks oh like i that. remember like, i remember Yes, you know I'm doing. I'm like, oh, and I. That's why I've not picked up Banjo Kazooie recently. I'm like, I don't want to go back into that, but I need the to. Stream, the I stream that I caught where you were, you was in, you were in Clunkus Cabin. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, that, that was, when I knew you were doing that level, I was like, I have to watch that stream because I spent 15 minutes trying to figure out what do I do, and then I finally figured it out. I was like, I don't want you to have to sit there and try and figure it out. Then watching I you try that. to turn that key at the bottom is one of the funniest things oh yes and, and like i'm almost there Girl, yes yeah oh it was almost yeah. as funny as you screaming come on bennett come on bennett bennett, <laughs> bennett. come on bennett no bennett bennett i know i know that your mother didn't love you but come on bennett just don't just don't do this to me right now <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i, I yeah Look at the April first uh, edition of getting over with, with Bennett Foddy on Game of the Week. That was fun, but uh, yeah, the the it, the sound bite too. Yeah, it was so hard <laughs> to sit off to the side and not make any noise. So it was it, so. Funny. I didn't hear you, but I, I listened to the whole thing. I had I my face you. buried in the floor. <laughs> he was suffocating himself. I was. I was trying to um, stifle my laughter through like a sound screen. sound dampening foam. Yeah. Yes. By like literally eating carpet. Yeah. So Final Fantasy VII will be coming out March 3rd, 2020, so near my birthday. This is not the whole Final Fantasy VII, though, so it's going to be an episode. Just episode. the first episode. So. Yeah. Uh, we That's the thing. We don't know how far the first episode goes. A lot of people are assuming that it ends when you go to leave the city. Yeah. Which was a massive turning point in that game, and that's a fair assumption. That, I mean, that's a large chunk of the game, so hopefully that is where it is, and it's not sooner. Because I have a feeling that this is going to be like four parts, and that's kind of like I want to remember like halfway ish. Right? But I could be wrong. I don't quite know. But then again, I don't. I don't think I'm going to play it until it's all out. I plan to play when it comes out, but knowing me with some games, I still have to play. Like Kingdom Hearts, I still got to play it. I probably won't play it until <laughs> it's all out. Leo Wild saying that the first episode, from what they're reading, would be Midgar focused. Yeah. I believe that I, that's the name of the city that you're in. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure, but I don't remember. And one that we've been hearing for a while is about a new Avengers game. And we got the announcement that they are working on Marvel's Avengers. And it's going to be developed by Crystal Dynamics, the team behind the, the new Tomb Raider. And I have not played the latest Tomb Raiders, but I loved their first Tomb Raider. I mean, that game was so fun. Mm. That was a, a, a reboot that was amazing. So, so what do you guys think of the, the game that you of what you've seen so far? I'm impressed. It looks kind of bland to me. I don't know why. It just kind of looks bland. But then again, it was kind of a bland teaser trailer. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't know. But from what I've been told, basically... You can pick up and play any of the characters at any time, but Ooh. you will get rewarded for sticking with one character and upgrading them and, and, and going through their levels and stuff. It's interesting. It's I believe it's like four player co-op, so that'll be fun. But I don't I don't know. It just kind of seems bland. And I don't I don't know if I'm able to get over the fact that it's not just the cast and it's not just, you know, the MCU. I know it's talented voice actors, but it's just, it's, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not Robert Downey Jr., so it's going to sound funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. Chris Evans isn't, you know, Ca- Captain America. I don't know. Yeah, they've gotten us so used to the same people being it because they appear in every movie and they keep that consistent. Yeah. 
So then when that is very difficult to break. Exactly. So I think that by virtue of the fact that it is just voice actors and not the actual people, I feel like that's kind of an omen for what the whole thing is going to be. And yeah. I'm got curious the why they wouldn't get them. Like, right. I don't know. Well, I mean, budget. I highly doubt they put in, oh, um, you know, 10 movies and two games into the contract because they never considered it. I mean, right. I'm sure if you ask Robert Downey Jr., hey, do you want to come in and pretend to be Iron Man, but you don't have to actually physically be on set? You can just be in your pajamas in a recording booth. I highly doubt he wouldn't be like, nah i'm good yeah they well, brings up a good point that marvel is also the comic so it's probably not supposed to be the mcu but you know i've got the that is also the, true yeah the answer to this yeah so woody from toy story so tom hanks does not voice woody in the in the non-movies mm. his brother voices Woody. so what we need is we need marvel avengers with woody voiced by tom hanks's brother and then see we get what sounds like Woody from Toy Story doing all these amazing things. Mm. Well, in the comics, they have technically turned Tony Stark into Robert Downey Jr. because nobody cared about Tony Stark before yeah. Iron Man the movie, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of funny. But like, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I- I'm not. I'm not going to judge it until I see gameplay yeah. and a possible demo. But at the moment, the trailer is just kind of yeah. bland. And yeah. I hate to say that about a game because it's by crystal dynamics. I am willing to give it a lot more hope. I mean, because okay. again, they've had me floored. In fact, I need to play more of the, the two murder games and I, I want to replay the original. It was just so much fun. It felt so, so good. And like the, the controls are good. So, I mean, I know this is Avengers and that was Tomb Raider, but th- that team has good chops. And Lee Rob says that they showed a younger Hank Pym, which is more like the comics. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. And, before we move on to the final show that basically for Nintendo fans, I just give away who we're going to go into is for a second, but they rocked E3. I mean, I mean, all, all these were good, good shows, but Nintendo rocked E3, but I love that there was, you brought to my attention, Spaz, that kind of funny games did a showcase of indie games. Yeah. So last year at E3, they announced that the indie showcase uh, wasn't happening so a youtube channel kind of funny decided you know what screw that we're gonna do it instead from what i heard greg miller himself basically reached out used all of his industry contacts because he worked for um ign for a long while before starting kind of funny with with basically a small group of them reached out to all his contacts were just like every indie developer send us a real send us a trailer, send us information about your game. We're going to put this into this one long, hour-long thing. And this year they got about 60 games together. Wow. And it is ridiculous. Like, like I, I tried to keep track of them, but there was way too many to, to make a list. But so much of it is interesting. They're all indie games, so it's probably something you've probably heard none of them. But it's definitely worth sort of looking at them. Yeah, uh, Tom of Three Extra Lives has gotten me into playing a lot more indie games recently, and and I'm enjoying because some of these I love that they're not big things like Assassin's Creed, so like I don't have to put in hours and hours to finish, and I like them because mm. then I can have fun with it, I can experience what the developer wanted to do, but I then can go back to some like the WoW and some of the other games. I've always loved indie games; they've they've always had a place in my heart, and that's one thing that on live really was cool about. For a while, they were launching indie games on their service because they, they want to give you know, places a, a thing in in the online game pass that they had you could get indie games included with it but yeah it's cool that that kind of funny took up the mantle and was showing all these places because e3 is where a lot of the press gets their view of games and they're like okay it's not just the triple a things but there are some of these up and coming people these developers may not even in the future be working at the companies that they're working at now they may move on to some of the big publishers but this is where a lot of them get their start Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just kind of scrolling through all these games. There's some amazing things that look really cool, and I hope uh, Tom of Three X Lives is listening because I hope he takes note of all these things and t- check out Three X Lives as well. It's a weekly podcast about indie games. It's fun. There's trivia. Yeah, in 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 the video itself, there is a comment that has the list of every game, and it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, a hell of a lot. And now a company that is not an indie company. In fact, they started as a card game company making little card packs back in the 1800s. Nintendo. You never know? heard of them. Who? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, Are they new? 
Yeah, I, I think they they wanted to kind of come up and switch up gaming and stuff like that. Ouch. Ow. <laughs> that hurt my soul. <laughs> Ow. I'm sorry. Ow. I'm sorry. I was trying to add a little bit of breath of like wild puns and stuff like that. Uh. So they came up. They weren't at E3, I don't think, but they had a press conference around E3. They always do the directs. Yeah, which makes sense because it's expensive to get to E3. They knocked it out, and there's a lot more than even what we'll cover today. But one of the ones that may get me, to, I'm on the fence for a Switch. Not that I think it's a that's not worth it. It's just the money to get the Switch, though I been buying other stuff so I, I just need to go out and buy it because luigi's mansion three yes mm. and leo wild brings up that nintendo had booth and such at e3 so they, they did their conference direct and then they then did the the booth which, which makes sense you want something for the press to see you, you want people to see it but yeah luigi mansion 3 looks really good because it started on the gamecube then it was on the wii if i understand right yeah uh yes i don't know because it was also was one for the way okay then because i know there was one on the 3ds which i had a friend who was all, all I know be GameCube because and 3ds yeah but yeah this looks oh, and, and, really and good 64. and 64 okay yes and 64 and gamecube and like i love luigi's because if i was walking through a mansion full of ghosts luigi would be me i mean eric you, you can probably relate to that right <laughs> what that i would be uh luigi walking through a haunted house Oh, yeah, that, that's a very good way to describe you, mm-hmm. Luigi and Luigi's Mansion. Absolutely. And for anyone that hasn't played Luigi's Mansion, it is one where you are walking around a, a mansion that's haunted as Luigi, and you are you are sucking up ghosts. They're ghostbuster. Yeah. yeah. And well, a cool thing about this one is you can, you can also have a co-op person. Goo Luigi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it can fit through different things so, so if you're a single player it can do stuff but if you're there you can also that looks really good yeah. apparently the developer uh one of the developers of the game has been asked multiple times what they canonically w- say uh Gooigi would taste like <laughs> and from what his response was it was probably lime hmm. oh ooh. well he is Put green the lime so and the sense. coconut yeah <laughs> yeah and i just saw slime today Someone actually made the slime using the recipe for edible slime from Nickelodeon. Wow. And it, it was so cool to see that. And then there is a awakening of Zelda. So they announced Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening coming out on September yes. 20th. Yes. And that looks amazing. Yes. There's a lot of things like that, especially that I, because of doing Game of the Week, I look at it more selfishly that way. I don't. I don't play video games for my own enjoyment. I play them for content now. But, mm. um, yeah. you got to keep on top of the trend. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> what, what a hard life. I mean. Oh, I know. I know. And there's a game that, that they're bringing to the Switch. You have to just play The Witcher 3 coming to Switch. I don't know what that's going to be like. Because. Another 100,000 hours. Yes. Yeah. Because you're, you're right. It is amazing on the ps4 and this was not on the pro but this was on the ps4 but when i saw somebody playing it on the pc recently i gotta buy witcher 3 i think i may i may have a copy i, yeah. I need to play Witcher, Witcher on, P- on pc because it looks oh, gorgeous on the pc oh yeah and that is a game I, I i got lost in for a long time and i need to go back and play it because i never finished it but oh and they're ringing to the to the switch yep which it, it's incredible yeah your switch is now your skyrim it's your original breath of the wild yep and now you're with your three console. I mean, and it plays Tetris too. And Tetris, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Tetris ninety nine. Yeah. Yes. And Diablo three. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And the Switch is looking to New Horizons, so they are bringing Animal Crossing. That is a game I spent so many times. I don't. Well, here's the thing about Animal Crossing. It makes no sense why it is enjoyable or addicting at all. But I played Animal Crossing, and there is no reason I should like the game. And I have put hundreds, hundreds of hours in Animal Crossing. Exactly, and that's the point. I, it'll it's be- just it's it's no it's noodling it's noodling it's just doing yeah. little busy work when yeah. you've got space. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. And I can do it forever. Because how's it going to be different from other ones? Not really. It's going to be the same game. Yeah. Co-op. Okay, but I mean, Ooh. still. Four players. You know, that's still going to be roughly the same, but... Mm. Yeah, that raccoon, or 
is it a fox? Tom, Tom Nook? Nook. He's a tanuki. Yeah, a it's tanuki. a raccoon. Okay. Raccoon. Basically. Raccoon. Okay. And he's gonna want. He's gonna be like, I want more. I want more. More money. More money. More money. More money. Like, okay, here you go. Oh, okay, now I want more money. Yeah. Okay. And and we're gonna do everything. We're we're gonna rub those trees and stuff like that. Yeah. Although so get- everybody, that was the best thing at the very end of the trailer. Tom Nook just walks up and gives you the bill for everything, <laughs> and that's that's when everybody in the crowd was just like, God damn, Tom Nook. We knew <laughs> yeah. it was gonna happen. We knew it. <laughs> I mean, stuff like this is is why a switch is really on my radar and I'm just holding out for a little bit longer for money and for the new models that may be coming out. Cause if there is just a new model of switch. Yeah. Well, th- there's rumors, but there's nothing. Confirmed. Yeah. That is true. But you know, they, they confirmed one thing and smashed our hearts to pieces. In a good well, way. They actually did something that was good for both Western audiences and the sort of East as well. The Dragon Quest hero is coming to Smash. Ooh. And a lot of people on that side are just like so hype. But a lot of Western people are like, Dragon Quest never played it, who cares? And then at the end, they did a teaser for Banjo and Kazooie in Smash. And that's when the Western half of the audience went absolutely mental. The reveal trailer was almost the same as the King K. Rule release trailer. Yeah, but it had K, uh, K. Rule sitting there, and you saw the jiggy sort of dance past. Yeah, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Yes, finally, <laughs> finally, finally!" And they, um, look when right. they, bought, they look right. Yes, they look great. I was concerned when I saw them. that. I was like, "Are they going to be nuts and bolts? Are they going to look they right?" Are. And they look beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. I. Yes. I am so. I was so stoked about that. And and I was and the fact that they were raring to go was just just the most yes, beautiful. That was the best. That. Most yeah, beautiful. The, those intros, those intros are always great. Yes. Um, when they brought Joker to Smash, I was so disappointed because yeah. I didn't like how he played. Yeah. But from seeing how Banjo and Kazooie plays, I'm like, I think I have a new main. Yeah, <laughs> I fully agree. I fully agree. Because I was I was like. He's gonna have to use Kazooie to hit people. He does, and then he does. he has all he does does has all the moves. Yeah, I, that, that you know from the games. Yeah. I I can't wait for that. I am so excited. Yeah, and that one we won't have to wait until next year. Yeah, and because now, it's gonna be falling into our switches this fall. He is here's the thing. I'm hoping. That that means that Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie may get an HD Switch release. Oh, Ooh, yeah. that is completely unfounded well, rumor that I'm making up right, right. now. But I hope now, to you is this just an HD Switch release like they did for the Xbox, or is this like remastered graphics? Oh, I would love remastered. I would love it too. And controls, and controls. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You, you'd have a camera stick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean that alone would get me to buy a a a <laughs> new switch because one of the reasons I got the Xbox was I wanted to play Banjo Band- Kazooie. I kept wanting to play it over, and then I played it like, oh, this is why I stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It still plays right, like it's an N64 because I'm an Australian. What is what is fall? What months are they? That is September, October, and November, r- roughly yeah. uh, somewhere yeah, it in might November. Might be my turn- birthday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now we are getting into summer. So you will see later this month the Browsercast logo go from green to yellow. Yep. Oh, because the I, sooner it comes the I like to breathe a, a wind of fresh air into the wild podcast atmosphere. And Nintendo likes to breathe a breath of wild. <laughs> that was very bad. And it's looking dark as hell. Yeah. Like, this game has taken a dark turn, uh-huh. and I think I'm going to love it. Yeah. It's rare that I'm ever let down by Legend of Zelda, and I don't think I will be with this. No. Uh, like, was that a point? I've <laughs> No, but <laughs> now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It, I never played the first one because again i don't have a switch but i watched my nephew play so much of it and my friend play so much of it so i mean i know that is a gorgeous watch game. The gameplay of it oh yes <laughs> on youtube yeah. yes 
Maybe somebody you know made a bunch of music. Breath of the Wild is one of those games like Skyrim that you can just lose yourself in for hundreds of hours. Yeah. yeah. And it still feels like you're making progress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that you can pretty, pretty much do anything, but you might die. Like, my, my nephew was going to go against one of the bosses, and he's like, I'm dying. You know what? I'm going to go find some better equipment and find some better stuff. Then he went back there. He was like, I beat that one. I was like, yes. Man, you find a bunch of better swords. That's the only nitpick I have with that game is that the swords break too damn much. Yes. And halfway through a boss, you run out of weapons. It's just like, I guess I can use this stick. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and when you remind, I think they're doing a sequel to this and they're making another Legend of Zelda because Breath of the Wild was so popular. But the thing I, I thought that was cool about Breath of the Wild, hearing in interviews that the creator of, of Zelda said that Breath of the Wild is what they always wanted Zelda to be. Yeah. They were just limited by tech and stuff like that, but they always wanted that that open world adventure where you go around and do different yeah. things. That's what I always love about Breath of the Wild. Is, is you tell, it's, it's, a, it's a passion. It's not just a game we're making to do the Zelda. No, we're putting our heart and soul into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking of of the heart and soul of Legend of Zelda, they're actually putting that into another game as DLC. Oh, which game? Uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Ooh. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a top-down dungeon-crawling game. Okay. But to do anything successfully, you have to move to the beat. Ooh! Ooh. And every dungeon has a different beat to it. I've avoided it because I don't want to play it on Switch because, like, I wouldn't be able to listen to it properly without headphones on in the mornings. And yeah. I generally listen to podcasts on the train. The enemies move on the beats. And so, do, and so in theory, should you, you can sort of, you can mess it up, but if you don't move on the beat, like you don't do damage or you, you get, you take damage, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And so you move to the beat as you move through the dungeons and they're including a whole bunch of legend of Zelda tracks. They've sort of kind of techno fied some of this music from The Legend of Zelda as well. They've put in some items from it as well. It looks really, really cool. Yeah. It's just one of those games that I, 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 I would suck at because I'm currently playing through Danganronpa V3 on the Switch. Oh. And there's a section of it where you have to do stuff to the beat to argue with people. And I'm just like, I have to pause the podcast, plug my headphones in and, and play it with sound to get through it. Otherwise, it's just... Oh, it can be so annoying. You mean you can't just sing along to, to my talking and stuff like that? And you, I, 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 like right now, I could be. You can't just move to the beat in the, the Danganronpa crypto dancer right now. There are like three different beats in that. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would be a cruel yeah. dungeon. Every other yeah, beat is different. Changes. Beat. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm hoping the video cool for it is amazing. Yeah, I'm hoping that the Breath of the Wild sequel, though, kind of does what they did with Galaxy 2 in that it doesn't mess with what they already did. It just expands on it. Yes. yes. And Definitely. adds Yoshi if they want. I would be fine with that, too. So. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, there is a motorcycle in Breath of the Wild. So I yeah, they added a motorcycle. They added Ganon horse. Yeah. So, you know. And, and you can also do Ganon yeah, in Diablo 3. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's it's thoroughly surprising how how friendly, it, the best word I can come up with, Nintendo is being with a lot of their properties for other games coming to the Switch. Like, oh, Diablo wants to do a Ganon-style armor set, and they're just like, yeah, sure, no worries. Yeah. It's like, we want to put Legend of Zelda stuff in this indie game, Crypt of the Necrodancer. So they're like, cool, here's the songs. Go for broke. Yeah. It seems like they're becoming way more friendly of a company, whereas previously it's like, oh, we want to do a crossover with Nintendo. They're like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we want to release something that was in Japanese and English. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's one reason why we got Banner Kazooie in Smash is I think Microsoft even realizes Nintendo's not a competitor. It's a compliment. I mean, of course, if you're at home playing, it does take away time if you're doing one thing. There was probably a spike in sales of Banjo Kazooie mm-hmm. games. Yeah on like the marketplace when banjo kazooie was announced because everyone's rushing to replay it yeah absolutely yep i should have said raring to replay it. <laughs> that was a missed opportunity well at least somebody did take the opportunity in terms of the game developers yes mm. and wow i i have to say this has been an, a packed episode i mean we've gone through quite a bit and this isn't even like you should see our, our show notes that Spaz did an amazing job going through. And I, I thank you, Spaz. That that was incredible. No problem. Although, you know where we haven't gone? Where? 
We haven't gone to the Olympics. Oh! oh. I cannot believe they're releasing another Mario and Sonic <laughs> the Olympics. I just... It, although, yeah. from what I've seen of it, it looks like they've taken a lot more care in the, the games themselves, yeah. and it doesn't look like a really dumb... Just... The oh, yeah, push the button to throw the thing. More or less insufferable. Yeah, yeah. they made no sense. Like, yeah. I press I press A to use my left foot, B to use my right foot, and then R to wave my hand. What? <laughs> I thought I was, I thought I was doing long jump. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I have to wave my hand? Yeah. Like it's yeah. yeah. It, it looks like they've really refined it. Yeah. But I have no idea if I'm even going to well, bother with it. I think some of the problem with the Mario and Sonic games was they were developed by Sega and not Nintendo. And Sega, I don't know if they've had their stuff together for a decade or more. Like no. Yeah, like they're like the '90s. They were crushing it, but like, what happened now? I don't know. That I, 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 I don't know. They made some bad decisions. Uh, yeah, they didn't keep up with the times. Yeah, they thought everybody else was making a dumb, dumb decision, and they were wrong. Yeah, one of their best games that they made was Crazy Taxi because you didn't have to have precise controls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for me to drop this podcast off at the next stop because i think my timer is running down so thank you both for joining me on the frazzlecast e3 extravaganza special we will reconvene next year we can talk about where we've been and stuff like that yep but in, until then while we're all waiting for all these things where can we find you on the interwebs we'll start with spaz you can find me currently at spaz wesson on twitter in terms of previous things i've done i was the host on the Reigns of Azeroth for all 70-ish, 100-something episodes. I don't remember, to be honest. It's all about mounts in World of Warcraft. You know, we went on hiatus due to real-life stuff. I'm still trying to get my stuff back together to start something new that I'm working on. Yeah, but other than that's uh, reignsofazeroth.com. That's about it. And I, I've always enjoyed the Reigns of Azeroth, so I, I, I'm excited for, for its return, but... I'm also glad that I've been able to talk with you on here because it's been fun to, to be able to get more of that spaz in my life. I hope I don't have to wait a whole year to be back on it as a guest. I, I will have to have you back on even before then because it's it's fun doing the Friday night Australian time zone stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just got to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning <laughs> like that first time you're on. <laughs> I was so tired and, you, and you're talking about stuff. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> And Eric, where can we find you? Same place as always. Um, YouTube, Game of the Week. Every weekday at noon. Every single weekday at noon. New video. Next week is... Well, the when this goes out, the current week, it'll be The Division 2. Game's coming up. It's going to be all Nintendo in July. Crash Team Racing. The Nitro Fueled. The remaster. I can't wait. That will be next week. So if you listen to this the week it comes out, it'll be the following week. Um, so got that coming up and maybe Minecraft. I'm trying to actually finally get it together and actually do that one for real. So 400th videos coming up in, I don't know, a month. So watch out for that. But in the meantime, you can enjoy the other 375 that are out there now <laughs> so or whatever it is. But uh, yeah, Game of the Week. That's about it. You can find me on one of the Game of the Weeks. So yeah, see uh, if I'm, you can I'm find on. it, though. See if yeah. you can find it. Cutting over at part one. Yes, and uh, hear me talk about yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of good points. It. Come on, Bennett. <laughs> yeah, just get over it already. <laughs> yes. Well, I think I'm gonna head back to Iron Forge and see if I can find another another mount because I mean I gotta get up to worst bases. I got a long way to go. <laughs> Three hundred and six. Activating customized offer a transporter. Well, I am back in my home of Iron Forge until we one day reclaim Nomergon. Yay! Let's look at what has been happening in the community. Awesome. Let's do that. Skull made an amazing WoW parody of You're Welcome with Thrall and Jaina. Here's a small clip that I got permission to play. So what I believe you are trying to say is thank you. Thank you? You're welcome. What? No, no, I wasn't. Okay, okay. I see what's happening here. Once again, a war chief's gone deranged. You don't even know how to deal. It's deplorable. Well, it's nice to know the horde can't seem to change. Start to rebel. Let's begin. 
Yes, it's really me. It's Go World. Breathe it in. I know it's a lot. The hair, the grin. When you're staring at the world shop, man. What can I say except you're welcome for the hammer I let you try. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, you're welcome. I'm just an ordinary orcish guy. Hey, what has two thumbs and made Deathwing die? When you were training your magi, this guy- I recommend you go and listen to the full thing. Has it made me smile? And there's a cool music video along with it. This is one of my favorite songs from Awana. And Dungeon Fables just reached episode 50, and they released an episode where the community created bosses for a raid called Sacking a Booty Bay. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I want to congratulate Dungeon Fables on one year of podcasting. That's an amazing milestone and a lot of consistency, and I cannot wait for more Fables throughout the years. And this one is a very limited timing. I just heard about it, but Blizzard is giving away 15 copies of the 15-year anniversary collector's edition. It ends on June 23rd. And before you get your hopes up, it is only open to EU players. Sorry if I got your hopes up if you're in the US, but this is cool for once having a contest that isn't just for the US. And I wanted to let you all know in case you listen to this episode before the deadline's over. And uh, MMO Champion has announced that the Curse sites, including them, have been sold by fandom to Magic Find. Curse was bought by Twitch, and then Twitch sold off the sites to fandom. Now fandom has sold them off again. I, of course, am optimistic. I'm optimistic in a lot of things, and I'm optimistic for their future, at least for MMO Champions' site. But it's weird and worrying to hear this. And in another bit of sad news, Stone has announced information regarding the future of WoW Challenges. It will continue, but I urge all of you to read the heartfelt letter from Stone and ask you to let him know the impact that he and WoW Challenges have had on your life. I've gotten so much enjoyment out of it, making a facepalm, I hope to continue to talk with him in a lot of different areas. And I have enjoyed finally starting the Iron Man challenge. So it will continue, but not with stone. Our community is very compassionate for those going through difficult times. And there are two awesome things happening this month to raise money for the Trevor Project. It is the world's largest suicide prevention and crisis intervention organization for LGBTQ youth. So Blizzard is selling a pride pin with the Blizzard Entertainment in Rainbow and it's on sale through the gear store, and proceeds through July 31st will go to the Trevor Project. And the running of the trolls will take place on June 29th at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It'll be on Feathermoon US. The goal of the run is to bring awareness and raise money for the Trevor Project, and the goal for this year is $3,000. Well, this has been another packed episode of Frazzlecast. I know a lot of it wasn't WoW-focused, but I wanted to take time to talk about E3 and maybe see if there's any games out there that maybe you're interested in. It got me interested last year in hearing about all the stuff from E3, and I want to continue this tradition of the E3 special every year. And I wanted to let you all know that Red Pally Jill, who we have gotten in the know through talking with them on this show, they posted recently, and it is so great to hear from them. I even saw them today while I was streaming Watch Dogs 2, which I bought during the show. So a lot of things have happened. They have seriously depleted a lot of their medical expenses, and Christy Golden has put out a call to help support Jill with retweets, buying from Jill's awesome store, and Jill even left a comment on the Twitter thread on how to send over PayPal donations. We love you, Jill, and I'm glad to hear from you again, and we are going to be there for you through all the recovery. And Dravid invited me to be on Epic Fail Podcast last week. I was on episode 192, and I'll be on episode 193 tonight as long as nothing happens to cause this show to be postponed. Like the internet, etc. I hope I'm not toying with the old gods by saying that. And every week, I like to take time to thank all my Twitch subs out there. Thank you to Michael of the Blue Recluse and Nerd This Podcast and the Genome Project. Thank you to Dusty of Nerd This and YouTube Creators Hub Podcast and also the awesome Dusty Streams. Thank you to Smash Sars. Thank you to Thorn of Lagging Balls and BNN. Thank you to Velicella. And thank you to Zorts the Goblin. And thank you to Secret Links for the bits this past week during one of the streams. If you want to support this show with a bit, tip, sub, or shirt, please go to support.gnomepodcast.com. All of these bits, tips, subs, and shirts can help supporting this labor of love. Well, I am Frasley, and you can find the show at gnomepodcast.com. So until next week, be awesome. Please unplug Buxley before leaving. Buxley here to answer your World of Warcraft questions in this edition of Ask Buxley. This question is about mining. 
Dear Buxley, I was out mining the other day, and right after the node disappeared, someone else came up, swung their axe at the place where the ore used to be, even though there wasn't anything there. What's going on? You've encountered the Mining Intern League. The person you saw is a brand new league member, known as a Miner Miner. Those people are told to run out, mimic swinging a mining pick every time they see someone else trying to mine ore. That's how they learn how to mine. You might have even encountered a more advanced league miner, known as a major miner. These folks will swing an axe in a mining node, pretend to gather ore, but leave the mining node intact for you. You'll encounter all kinds of different league members. Some members of the Mining Intern League are very young, and they have pet birds that go out with them. Some of those birds can even speak. So if you're out mining and you see a child with a bird practicing their mining skills, you know you've run into one of the Mining Intern League's Minor Mina Minor Miners. Thanks for your question! If you'd like to see what I'm up to every day, follow Ask Buxley on Twitter. You can listen to the archives at AskBuxley.com. Mining is money, friend! <laughs> Welcome to the Frazzle Report, a short broadcast by me, the awesome gnome, about the world of Warcraft. So we got wind that Microsoft is making an Xbox body wash in coordination with Axe Body Spray. You know, the stuff that you walk into a room and you can instantly tell that a teen lives there. The Verge reports that Link's Xbox is a fresh scent of a pulsing green citrus featuring top notes of kaffir lime and winter lemons, aromatic herbal middle notes of mint and sage, and woody bottom notes of patchouli and clearwood. Well, the reason I'm reporting on this, aside from the fact that I own an Xbox, is that Blizzard was trying to unveil their own line of body wash. It was going to be a BFA-inspired scent featuring a unique aroma for each race. Old Spice was going to be the supplier, and they even had a scantily clad Anduin on a horse for the commercials. But issues kept arising sadly when the Worgen scent was smelling like wet dog. And my sources even said that they had some cool scents, like the dwarves were going to smell like ale with a slight iron forge smyrna smell. I mean, not overpowering. And they didn't want to release the line of scents and have Worgen missing, because Worgen have already been howling for their models, which you're getting in 8.2. It's weird, though. This product was left out of the recent article by Kotaku on the canceled StarCraft FPS. Thankfully, I was able to catch whiff of the scent on this story. And speaking of cancel items, the GM Island is being laid to rest in 8.2 and 1.13. At Marleman on Twitter posted about how the Exploration Reboot Discord found the island still existing in-game, and they paid a visit for the last time. Ah, this is a relic of the time when GMs still visit you in-game. Those were the days. Well, I smell that the time has come. Well, I mean, not really smell. It's hard to smell time, but I had to try and transition to this. Until next time, be awesome. Ooh, ooh, I must have forgotten the right deodorant today. Hi, my name is Joe Hogan, and I'm a geek. And if you're currently listening to this, there's a good chance you're a geek too. So check out my podcast, Geektitude. Each week, I talk with somebody about their geek aptitude. Sometimes I talk to people in a geeky profession, Sometimes it's someone doing something really cool with their geekiness. Often it's another geeky podcaster. But it's always someone who wants to share their inner geek. So join me each week as we come together to geek out about all the geeky stuff we love. And remember, this week, keep it geek. Frazzlecast is a fan podcast that covers Blizzard games. We are not affiliated with Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. Views expressed by the hosts and guests are their own. Some of the art, music, and sound effects come from Blizzard Games and are owned by Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. No copyright infringement is intended. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com.